A couple of things here. First, for those of you wise asses that are going to take to the comment section of this review and say, well, if you don't like it, don't watch. I haven't been watching. This is the first episode of Raw that I've watched from beginning to end in quite some time. So your logic, just like your dad's condom on the night you were conceived, ultimately fails. Number two, you're going to complain about me complaining. Keep this in mind. I'm not going to pretend it's good when it's garbage. And the vast consensus is that it's garbage by so many varied metrics. To pretend it's something otherwise, just to justify why you continue to watch on a week in, week out basis, might work for you, but ah, it ain't flying with me. I'm still really wondering why, of all weeks, I chose this week to try watching Raw again, from beginning to end. I almost think there was a morbid curiosity for me after last week's show where I saw so many people complaining about it, so many people bashing it, to the point where I'm seeing articles in newspapers and on websites talking about it being the worst Raw ever. It's almost like I gravitated to that a little bit. Gee, imagine that, human nature, gravitating to negativity. But the way it was being talked about and the level of depth of vile and vitriol that was being expressed towards the WWE in last week's Raw show made me curious to see just how bad it could really be. Like, how bad could it be? After watching this show, I most certainly got my answer. As I was watching all three plus hours on Monday night, I had one question continuously come to me over and over and over again with basically pretty much everything that happened on the show. And not so much from a standpoint of haven't watched in a while, haven't really kept track all that much, so I don't really know what's happening. Just more so from a standpoint of trying to figure out what the thought process here, what the logic is here, what, what were you exactly hoping to accomplish here? The one question that kept coming back to me time after time, each and every single segment during this show, was why? You open it up. It's supposed to be Nia Jax and Tamina against Ronda Rousey and Natalia. But that doesn't happen because the Riot Squad comes out and jumps Natalia and jumps Ronda Rousey. The one question I had, the Riot Squad still exists. Why? They're a thing. They're literally doing the same shit they were doing months ago when I actually last watched. Why? Sasha Banks and Bailey apparently are still associated with each other. And we're teasing their friends, but teasing there could be something between the both of them. Why? Like months ago, I thought we were talking about shitting or getting off the pot with these two heifers. And apparently, we're still fully entranced in the chamber pot with these two. Truly, either shit or get off the pot. Why is this still a thing? And apparently, one of the things that everybody bashed from last week's show was this open forum being hosted by Alexa Bliss. Well, I don't know about last week because I didn't watch it, but this week's was god-awful and terrible. It was so bad last week, you dug your heels in and you did it again. Why? You, so you ultimately spent 10 minutes to basically tease and promote women's tag team belts that don't exist, that people really truly aren't asking for. Why? This is that way you can promote a tag team match that was coming up right afterwards. Why? A video package featuring Baron Corbin talking about him being general manager elect of Monday Night Raw. Why? Why, why, why are we featuring Baron Corbin like he matters? Why, why, why are we pretending like people actually like Baron Corbin? Why, why, why are we pretending that Baron Corbin does anything other than absolutely suck? Morgan Wallen is shown on TV at ringside. Who? You put him on TV because he was on going to be on tribute to the troops? Why? I see Lucha House Party is a thing. 
Why? Because Vince looks at him and says, Hey, it's a couple of Mexicans. Let's put them in a mask. No, they don't know the difference. This is what they do down in Mexico if they come up through the caravan. I don't know what other logic there is. I don't know if there's really needed. Just the whole thing. Why? You have a heel authority figure allowing babyface teams to book their own unfair match stipulations. Why? Consistency matters. Why does Vince think consistency does not matter? Why? We had a Drew McIntyre appreciation night. Because apparently he did something that was worth being appreciated. Why? I'm not trying to hate on Drew. I'm just saying. If we got to the point where this guy looks like he's a leading contender to win the 2019 Royal Rumble, why? And more importantly, where the fuck did everything go wrong here? As you're having this whole celebration ceremony, here comes fucking Dolph Ziggler out. Why? And then after, after apparently most of these two being associated with each other, you're just automatically going to have a blow-off match between the two of them with no real build-up right here, right now, to where Dolph Ziggler fucking wins, so that way you can set up Finn Balor and Drew McIntyre. Why? And oh, by the way, <laughs> fuck Dolph Ziggler! Apparently I missed something because Leo Rush is on the main roster, but he's Bobby Lashley's manager. He's like Clarence Mason, with none of the appeal, none of the charisma, none of the talent on the microphone. Why? Bigger, more important question. Bobby Lashley's feature move is to basically turn around, bend over, and show up where the Patterson goes. Why? Why, 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 why is this a thing? And we're using Elias in this? We're evolving Elias in this? We're wasting Elias on this garbage? You already know the question I'm going to ask. Why? A random Rhino retirement match. Why? So that way we can make Heath Slater referee? Why? I was wondering what was going on with Dean Ambrose. I found out. Apparently Dean Ambrose is a fucking member of Slipknot or something. Why? Wearing a gas mask. Having an entourage wearing gas mask. Why? Because we're talking about the people are scum and they're spreading viruses. Dean Ambrose now all of a sudden he took a shower, shaved, and all of a sudden he's got some sense about personal hygiene. Why? Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins are having a yearly feud again. Why? Depleted talent roster my ass. Why, why, why are these two feuding against each other yet again? Nia Jax gets a live microphone. Why? Then screams like a banshee. Ah! Why? Finn Balor wrestles Jinder Mahal. Why? We're supposed to get excited about Lars Sullivan coming up from NXT? Why? Why would the fuck would we get excited about him? Why the fuck would we get any benefit of the doubt to the WWE? And Vince McMahon, they don't know how to utilize him on Raw or SmackDown. Why, why, why? Unbelievable. A women's tag match main event. Why? Especially if you're just going to have the babyface team go over. Why do this if you're not going to have your heels actually get some heat? Why bother with the match if this is all you were going to do? And then just even beyond all that, the whole philosophy of this entire show. You tried to make Baron Corbin a featured showcase piece. Why? It was Baron Corbin left. It was Baron Corbin right. It was Baron Corbin down your throat and up your ass. All right. Why? Look at me seriously. Like, even if you like Baron Corbin for some demented reason, look at him and explain to me what is it about him that makes you think, gee, that's a franchise guy, and I want to build my entire fucking show around him! Why? And then when you look at everything, you find out on Tuesday that this was the least watched. Not least watched non holiday, not least watched December. Not least watched in 2018. The least watched episode of Monday Night Raw in history. Let me rewind that. The least watched. The least watched. 
the least watched, the least watched Monday Night Raw in flipping history. Why? Gee, I wonder what the fuck the reasons could possibly be. Could it be, perhaps, that you featured women prominently in the beginning part of your show in lame-ass freaking segments, not understanding that when women used to be a rating straw for your company, it was because there were sexy women that did bras and panties matches and they had good stories. Now you take mediocre women who have some mediocre matches with mediocre looks and terrible freaking stories and you try to have them carry the first half of the hour of the show. That's not a formula for success. Then on top of that, you try to make the show a Baron Corbin showcase. If you looked at anything as a wrestling fan from 20 years ago and you were transported into the here and now, and you had somebody travel back in time and tell you beforehand and warn you and say, wrestling's not the same, WWE's not the same, it's bad, it's terrible, you think it's bad now, you better have a great appreciation, you cocksucker motherfucker, as to what you get to see compared to the crap that we deal with in 2018. You brought him here and they saw a bald-ass Baron Corbin being heavily featured throughout the show. They'd be like, what the fuck is going on here? That's what's being featured? That's what we're choosing to showcase? Who's the world champion on this Raw brand? Oh, it was Brock Lesnar. Well, you wouldn't know because he's not fucking there. So between putting women in crappy crap that truly doesn't appeal as much as the hardcore fans be like, we respect women now. We love women now. We want them to wrestle and all this other crap. The reality is it's not that simple. Especially when you put them in crap that is stupid. People won't want to watch. And when you're teasing and promoting Baron Corbin as a featured part of your product and presentation on a given night, you are actually warning fans ahead of time saying, beep, beep, don't watch our damn show because it's going to be absolutely garbage. But when you look at the entire three plus hours, everything to me just left me asking, why are we doing this? Why are we doing that? Why are we doing this? Why are we doing that? It's not hard to see why this is the least watch Raw of all time. This is bad. This is terrible. Perhaps the single most redeeming quality of Raw, as Bully Ray pointed out on Twitter on Monday night, was the commercial for SmackDown promoting Daniel Bryan, the new Daniel Bryan, appearing on Miz TV. Yeah, that might have been the best part of Raw. Why? Why is the SmackDown ad the best part of Monday Night Raw? You have a bunch of people that aren't stars that you care not to build into stars that are never going to be fucking stars being featured in crappy segments that have no purpose, they have no point, they have no meaning. You clearly look at this show and you see a company that gives you the feeling, the aura, the presence that they don't give a shit. Like, you cannot look at this week's Raw and the WWE product for Raw and think that this company truly gives a shit. They're a company that has no clue what the hell they're doing with their product. They have no clue what their identity is supposed to be. They don't know what the hell they're doing, and it clearly shows. Like, I thought being a little refreshed and taking a step back from the product for a little while would help me. Oh, I was so certainly wrong on that one. Oh, that was a good one. Whole night, I kept thinking to myself, why did I put myself through this? I asked for your thoughts and prayers before Raw because God knows I needed it. Unfortunately, just like as a way to combat gun violence, those thoughts and prayers did not help me get through the three hours of Monday Night Raw. Now, that said, that said, while this show was terrible, this show was bad, <clears throat> if this was comparable to last week's show, I don't know how we differentiate whether this was the worst Raw of all time or not. Because there's been a lot of bad Rawls in recent years. And if we always say this is the worst and this was the worst, then eventually it starts to lose its impact. But was this show good? Oh, God, no. Am I going to watch it next week? Why? Why would I? I was given absolutely no reason to do so. Unless you guys really want me to watch Raw next week for the simple purpose of probably coming back on here and shredding it again. I have to ask myself a sanity question of why, 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 why the hell would I put myself through that again?